cosmos is the energy and lifeblood of all things. Man is part of this energy and therefore holds the potential to achieve literally anything. Science is in the early stages of attuning to this enormous reservoir of knowledge where anything is possible. Our comprehension of such things is limited only by the painful realization of change. The idea of a living cosmos is such a new concept that we have not accorded it its rightful place. Contrary to the popular view, it can be shown and conclusively proved that that structure, that has an internal structure of incredible order and beautiful order, it's filled with electromagnetic waves going in, in bi-directions. Pick a frequency, there's a wave going in one direction and a wave in the other direction. The wave that's going backwards is an anti-wave. It's a, it's a time-reversed wave. And the vacuum is structured. This potential, a vacuum is just potential is all it is. Uh, this potential is filled with the harmonic series of these waves. And so it structures spatially by bidirectional wave sets. And it structures vertically in terms of harmonics. Now, if you then invoke this structure, and you do that with a nonlinear material, and you put in one wave in the nonlinear material, that material will take from the vacuum that excess structure because it turns everything into a potential, and it will put out multiple frequencies and harmonics. That's what nonlinear materials do. Interestingly enough, if you take time-reversed waves and put in those harmonics, when they back up through, they will restore one wave. You can gather the energy and collect it and integrate it together and produce a single thing of much greater energy and lower frequency. And so what you have is the vacuum structures in frequency and spatially and the connection are waves. And by the way, these waves do not have to move at the speed of light. They can have much greater velocity. Now, the importance of Whitaker's work is that he showed that if you were to take sets of waves that you made on the bench, you made a wave and its anti-wave, and you made the harmonic and its anti-harmonic, you'd have to have at least one interval, one interval. In music, we would call that an octave, you know, from C to the next C, for example. If you had at least one octave or one harmonic interval, you would then have a structured vacuum. Now, you can build such sets as these any way you wish to, and each one of those sets is a special form that you can build on the laboratory bench. There is a set, for example, that contains the electromagnetic parts that generate typhoid. That's Kosnashev's work, and that's Kosnashev's death photons that have been shown to carry death and disease. That work has been duplicated in West Germany, or Germany now, and also has been duplicated in Australia and here in the U.S. It also explains the work of Antoine Priori, who built a machine under the proper scientific auspices and under rigorous testing on lab animals, which cured cancer and leukemia almost 100%. Some eminent French scientists worked with him. It's still in the French medical literature. It was real. It existed. It was squelched. But what I'm saying is, if you use the Whitaker approach, you can now, for the first time, understand how Priori's device worked, because that's what it did. And he used a rotating plasma to make his phase conjugates. We didn't even know about the phase conjugate in those days. Today, we know that one of the things plasmas do, do under the right circumstances is phase conjugate, or time reverse. And he showed that you can cure cancer, leukemia. You could just as easily set a pattern that would cure AIDS. Uh, he showed you could clean out clogged arteries. Um, you could uh, change the immune system, increase the immune system, bring it back up, which would be very valuable to AIDS patients, for example. For every disease, there is a pattern which causes the disease in this structure. For the cure to every disease, you simply take its pattern and time reverse it, and you get the precise electromagnetic antidote. You then put that inside a potential, as Whitaker showed how to do, and you treat the body with that, which is like very, you know, like normal electromagnetic radiation. It's not ionizing radiation. It's not nuclear radiation. Expose them to a rippling magnetic field, for example, with these embedded in the field. And you cure the disease. And that's the kind of medical treatment we ought to have, not this cut them and burn them and poison them type thing that we have now. 
and many of them are still dying with cancer and leukemia and AIDS. It would take about three years. It would take a team of about 30-something people, facilities and so forth, in about three years, about $20 million a year to deliver the ability to do that kind of electromagnetic treatment. Yes, um, our knowledge grows rapidly in almost every discipline. Conservative um, scientists in the past, or if you like, futurologists, um, have always been um, too cautious, too conservative in their estimates. We know that um, there's a turnover every five years of doubling our knowledge, with the consequence that we have a completely different view in the world. Most people can't even keep up anymore with the advance uh, in science. Um, they have problems understanding modern computer science, cybernetics, um, biogenetic engineering, um, or nuclear physics. We talk today uh, about uh, great unified uh, models uh, of the natural forces. Um, the man on the street can't keep up, and um, he is only superficially informed about new aspects. We don't know what will happen in 20, 50, 100, or 1,000 years. Um, however, there's one thing we do know, that whatever happens in the future, science will have advanced far more than we can possibly think of today. And no imagination, no fantastic model that we may produce today will justifiably come close to the actual advance in 1,000 years. We really do have, right now, available to be born a completely new and drastically extended and drastically more capable physics, which unfortunately, unfortunately four nations of the world have weaponized but kept secret from their citizens and from the rest of the world. And what I am saying is that it's high time that instead of just using this in secret to build more weapons to kill more people and hurt more people or control more people, what we need to do is bring this out in the open and let's use it for the positive benefits, to heal people, to give them cheap energy and clean energy, to clean up the biosphere, to clean up our whole act, uh, to be able to heal all these diseases and this kind of thing. That's what I'm saying we've got to get on with the job.